All right, guys, I'm sitting here with the guys from Spaghetti Man. Um, thanks for coming out, guys. Um, why don't thanks you just us. first start by telling me in your own words what the film's about. All right. Uh, Spaghetti Man is a superhero satire uh, about Clark Kent, uh, who eats a radioactive bowl of spaghetti and uh, acquires the power to sling spaghetti in a way uh, similar to Spider-Man. Uh, Might I add, that's a secret identity that you just basically broadcasted Ooh. to the entire world. Sorry, Ooh. Spaghetti Man. You're now his right. family and friends are going to be in danger. Part. Yeah, I didn't mean to endanger the Clark Whatever. Kent family. Because he fights crime with spaghetti, but yeah. only if you pay him. Yeah, so, so elaborate a little bit more on that. Fighting crime like spaghetti. So the spaghetti is like... He can uh, he can produce it from uh, from his body. It's like, okay. Yeah. And he finds Shoots ways to shoot it violently or strategically to make people slip and fall or okay. knock people out, but he'll only do he has to negotiate a rate. He'll do it, but you have to pay him. To, what are the What are the rates like? Uh, I, you know, he wants to get a lot of money. Pretty but reasonable. He's ultimately actually. just wanting money. Yeah. So he'll do it fairly cheap. Okay. It's like a startup, you know. You kind of just get the money where it comes. Yeah. And Still want to make a little profit, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, he's not willing to work for free, but yet, you know, he has to make ends meet still. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's only fair. So I gotta say, I'm fascinated by this. I'm fascinated by the bag, the spaghetti man, the idea, all that kind of stuff. I love, I love superhero stuff. Talk to me. You guys must be superhero fans. Talk to me. Obviously, Superman, Clark Kent. You know, talk to me about where this came from. Ben, Ben, Spaghetti Man had the idea for Spaghetti Man uh, years ago, and I think it was just kind of a, a ridiculous idea of a, a superhero that slings spaghetti. And so we made a fake trailer for it, and then that just kind of stuck with us for a while, and uh, we made it into the feature. But I think we're all kind of influenced by superhero movies, because I think one, com one new one comes out a month now. Yeah. Uh, we just, all of us went and saw Batman vs. Superman together, and... Uh, we wanted to be a part of this this world with yeah. superheroes. You know, we're hoping, you know, we'll join Marvel or DC, whichever one will have us. You know, call us. We are reasonable with our rates. Uh, he'll join the Justice League or uh, the Avengers. Do you have see, a, it's a free license. Do you have In a this case, we'll make an exception for the capital. <laughs> yeah, do you have a preference for which one? Justice League or Avengers? Well, I prefer to work alone, but if I had to be forced to work with anyone, uh, uh, Justice well, League? Why would no? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, whichever one. Whatever, well, dude. Now, Batman, dude. We, we're DC now. DC, yeah. We were we were Marvel property now. We're DC. So while we're on the subject, what do you guys think of the you know the stuff they're doing right now, with superhero movies? I'm a big fan of Deadpool. Yeah. Unironically, yeah. uh, I love what they're doing with that. So you lean towards more more of a Deadpool type of movie than a, one of these other ones, Batman, Superman, or Avengers, or something like that. Uh, I think Deadpool jives with our vibe from Spaghetti Man similarly, so I think that's why I liked it. Uh, yeah. It kind of turns the genre on, a, on its head a lot like Spaghetti Man does. But um, I don't know. I'm a big fan of the tentpole uh, Marvel ones, like Civil War I'm really excited for. I don't see many of the spinoffs except for Ant-Man, which is amazing. Yeah. But mm -hmm. other than that, I haven't really seen like the second and third, or the first and second Thor movies, that kind of thing. I just watch the big ones. Yeah, I think it's it, it'll be interesting to see how how much longer this can last. Not that I wanted to end, but now you're getting it, now you're getting into like, you know, Doctor Strange and yeah. uh, uh, Captain Marvel and all the other not as popular characters. You know, well, the, I mean, it, I guess Ant Man proved that it can still work yeah. even with newer characters people don't know. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see how that works. And then the DC side of it's just getting started. So hopefully they can uh, kind of turn it around. Yeah. I like cool. Guardians of the Galaxy because not only did they oh, take yeah. something that That's nobody... That's definitely my favorite. Yeah, like, talk about nobody giving a darn about a property and then turning it into something amazing. Yeah. And talking animals. I have an obsession with talking animals. Mm -hmm. I just love them. Who doesn't? Yeah. Talking dog, talking cat, talking raccoon, <laughs> talking tree... Talking bag on the head. Talking bag on the head. Easy to dub. Easy You'll to... we'll join the Guardians of the Galaxy. You, you... Actually, we're actually we're gonna be Marvel. Now. Yeah, we're Marvel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So where where does the bag come from? Is that just part of the part of the suit or? Yeah, Kroger. Kroger. <laughs> <laughs> Kroger. No, he was a uh, Clark is out one night and he sees a crime and he's hiding because he's scared, and then he decides he has to do something to help, but he needs a mask and the only thing available is a paper sack. So okay. he uses the paper sack the first time, but because he's cheap. He doesn't it's ever not, replace it. He's not it. cheap. He's not cheap. He's, it establishes how intuitive he is as a superhero. Yeah, he's yeah, unmotivated. He uses his environment to his advantage. Yeah, no perks, no extra flair needed. It provides exactly what he needs. Uh, an identity... Uh, For no money. Concealing. Yeah, it's free. 
He's cheap. Not cheap. He's he's prudent. <laughs> That's great. Okay, so so talk about the festival a little bit. Uh, talk about what it's like to be accepted into the festival. Your experience so far. Maybe some of the things you've seen. It's been pretty great. We we got accepted. We found out, uh, you know, fairly fairly uh, late into the process. So it was a nice. It was a nice surprise that we got in, and then uh, we came in on Sunday, and we've just kind of been, I would say, hustling, doing a lot of hustling. You know, had the postcards, have some buttons. Uh, we met a lot of good people. Um, Filmmakers Lounge. We met a lot of people there. Yeah. Uh, went to some screenings yesterday, which was great. Went to Shorts Three and uh, Animation Shorts, um, and it's just it's a lot of fun meeting other filmmakers and the a lot of the we we always seem to gravitate toward the vol toward the volunteers because they seem to be the ones that. Not that the filmmakers don't love movies, but you know it's fun to talk to them about movies because they're volunteering their time just to be around all of this. So, yeah. uh, a lot of great people working the festival this year. I'd say not only are we making ourselves at home, Dallas is making us feel at home. Mm -hmm. That's great. Put that on a bumper sticker. <laughs> I'm sure it's out there somewhere. But you've got to license it to, from me. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, gotta make ends meet. So what is your, what's, you know, you talked a little bit about the character and, and what you'd like. What's your goal for this film? What do you hope people take away from it? What do you hope becomes of it, et cetera? Remember having the last time I answered that question. What'd you say? I, I went way too deep in the, oh, the yeah. philosophy <laughs> of the character. Yeah, you wrote like a student thesis project. Uh, you know, he gets in the Justice League or, no. Uh, you know, I'm hoping, I'm just hoping more people get to see it. I think it's a fun, it's a fun superhero movie. It is in the vein of Deadpool, but it's, it's a fun superhero movie. It's, it's a little different, has a little, plays, plays a lot with the format that you see a lot now with the Marvel movies and DC movies. And uh, I hope people like the character and the absurdity of the, uh, of the premise. People will. You don't have to hope. You just, you'll, you'll have to check out the movie and they will love the movie. I think it will make you think of superheroes in a little different way than you might not have before. Yeah. Because we are real people, too. <laughs> Just to put that out there, in <laughs> case every, anyone was concerned. <laughs> so, Mark, I know you've, you've done a lot of shorts, and, mm -hmm. and, and Riley, I know you've, you've worked on some, of, some bigger stuff as a PA, actually. Yeah, yeah. Which is yeah. pretty cool. How does, this, how does something like this compare to you know, an, an indie type of superhero movie compared to some of the other stuff you guys are used to? Um... The scale is definitely uh, slimmed down. Uh, that's an understatement. But um, no, definitely a much a smaller movie. You have less people work on it, but it's also a much more intimate experience. Yeah. You can work faster, and uh, it's a lot, a lot more fun in a lot of respects because you don't have this giant machine that, you, on a really big movie, you often don't know half of the people's names because there's just so many moving parts. But on this. It's this uh, us, our like core group of six people coming in every day. Uh, we m knew most of the people that we hired pretty well, so. So you say um, it was only about six people, the crew and. Uh, we have like our group, our the Heckbender group, me, and then our director of photography, Molly, uh, okay. and then uh, one of our other actors, uh, Jolo Cicero, as well. He was, uh, plays Keto in the movie. Um, we were kind of the the core bunch of. Uh, oh, and then uh, Lee Wolf, who plays uh, Brand Rackley's wife in the movie. Okay. Um, we all were kind of in it for the long haul and then had a lot of supporting cast just here and there for a couple of days. But um, Yeah, for a low-budget indie, we did ourselves no favors by having yeah. over 50 talking parts. Yeah, yeah it was movie. very ambitious, but uh, I think we, we met our expectations pretty well, too, because this is me and Mark's second movie together, so we had a pretty good idea of how to yeah. do this despite uh, its ambition. So. Yeah, you learn real quickly what you can't do and what you can do and some yeah. of the limitations and yeah. stuff like that compared to not only shorts but some of the bigger projects and things like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. How far the budget will go and, and how you can make things work. People double dip in and doing different roles and different jobs and stuff like that. Yeah. A lot more hands on. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. we even, like, VFX at some point was even a conversation we had and we actually ended up not doing it, I think, because the movie's stronger for not. Yeah. We kind of did the, the practical thing that's. Luckily, in vogue again. Yeah. Yes. Uh, That's great. Yeah. yeah. We didn't do it because we didn't have the budget. We did it. We didn't have the budget. Artistic but, reasons. But also artistic reasons. Yeah. Cool. Where was this movie shot? Uh, shot in Los Angeles. Shot in Los Angeles. Yeah. Oh, Eighteen days over two months. We had a. Uh, all of us had day jobs, so it was most. It was weekends, and then usually one night during the week we could meet up and uh, and shoot. Okay. I actually, I work in, in film myself, production shorts and features and all that kind of stuff. 
I always love hearing people talk about their experience on set. Like I said, you know, the differences between different projects. Tell me a, a story, something that happened, something that you don't normally talk about in interviews, maybe a, a funny bit, something that happened, some, you know, a funny joke, something that happened on set that, you know, you don't normally get to talk about. Mm. I mean, overall, I fart a lot, so <laughs> it... That's one of the, that, you, we don't talk about that in interviews. Yeah, that's a good yeah. That's one of the why do we could air that out? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's Thanks, one of the Dad. off-putting behind-the-scenes <laughs> moments that doesn't get talked about. Maybe on the DVD extras. Who DVD knows? extras. Yeah. No, I think it was it was a fun set because it was a very small small crew. I think there were there were lots of like, I think one of my favorite moments because I it was probably me, one of the few times I exerted any sort of directorial power was there's a scene where. Uh, spaghetti Ben is feeding Winston Carter peas, but the only peas we had were how many months old? I don't know. They were canned peas they that were, were from uh, like turn of the century. They were very old, and uh, he had to feed it to Winston, and they they smelt terrible, and they were they tasted terrible. But I think I had what I needed after two takes. But I was just like, let's keep going. Yeah. So I think I got. <laughs> I think I got three or four more takes, and by the end of it, uh, Winston was like shaking because he was about to vomit. Yikes. Uh, that was a good moment. And then uh, I think the best day, though, was the final day of uh, the big fight scene. It was a, we scheduled 16 hours. It was in a, a, do, a, a real dojo, and uh, wow. we had, I think, 15, 16 people on set the whole day, and it was, uh, it, was a, it was a monster shoot, but I think at the end it was a lot of fun. It was, it was pretty, pretty great. Cool. Yeah, we have two big fight sequences in the movie, and that was the second big one. So we have like a mini one in the middle, which is actually I think one of my favorite scenes in the uh, the drug slumlord house, yeah. where he's kind of learning to fight an ensemble fight, yeah. and then the dojo scene, which is just amp it up to a lot more fighters, and yeah. that was a lot of choreography. We actually were choreographing that before we ever even shot the movie. Oh, wow. And then he got kicked in the throat. Yikes! And which careful. made the cut. by a professional yeah. UFC fighter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. Muay Thai. Muay Thai. If it's Muay good, Thai. you gotta put it in there. Oh, yeah. And it was great. He got kicked in the throat, he fell, we yelled, cut, and then it was like, oh my god, are you okay? Yeah, kicked in the throat. It's hard to see when you have like an enormous beard and bag over your head, but uh, very clearly, uh, foot. Foot to Adam's apple, no protection. Does the bag ever come off? Frequently. Frequently. Yeah, that was a big issue with uh, when we were on our roof. And he was climbing the fire escape ladder, and every time you'd get to the top and jump over, the wind would just blow it off. And every time you had to catch it from falling 10, 15 stories to the ground. Yeah, there was a series of very complicated and dangerous uh, <laughs> shots that, we, that were pretty pivotal to the end of the movie that were nearly impossible to, to capture just because of wind and our own uh, ignorance, I think, in the process. So we learned a lot that day about how to secure a bag on a head. And kudos to you, because I looked over that fire escape once and uh, got very scared, and you just had to keep climbing up and down a side of a building. So he does his own stunts. Wow. It's a big deal. Yeah. He shows up on time, 80% of the time. We shot. And he does his own stunts. We shot in my house for a lot of the set, so it was pretty, pretty darn easy. To I'm trying to, I'm trying to, sell, I'm trying to sell you here. Oh yeah, no, I mean, I, I live in a house. Lives in a house. It's actually that's the twenty percent of the time it was late is when we were at your house. Cause yeah. You yeah. Come to your <laughs> yeah. Well, I had a cat that I had to, you know, put into my bedroom every so often because he kept annoying us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not you gotta watch set. out for those things on set. Yeah. Babies, animals, etc. Yeah. Not Planes. set ready. <laughs> yeah, he's not a sad cat. Yeah. Cool. Awesome, guys. Well, uh, we, I have best of luck in the festival. Thank Hope you. the uh, film gets seen by a lot of people and, and all best things moving forward. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks Thank you very much. much. Hope yeah. you guys enjoy Thanks for coming Check out. Check out SpaghettiManFilm.com. Yeah, definitely. Well, thanks.